Yes, people, it's Derby Day and the mighty Ipswich Town. We've got the Canaries today. The biggest East Anglian derby in almost a decade. It means a lot to everyone here. People outside of the counties, they don't really see it as a, a massive, fierce rivalry. But we are literally county v county. We don't see each other. We don't engage with one another. The hate is real. So yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this game. I did a proper preview yesterday. If you haven't seen that, put the details in the description below, check it out. And again, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. Before we get into anything though, we've got to give the shout outs, massive shout outs to Angel Care Homes for all your care needs in the Black Country in Birmingham area. Massive shout out to Mark Darcy for all your formal menswear needs. And of course, to Desi Ballers highlighting all South Asians at all levels in the beautiful game. Again, I'll put their details in the description. Check them out, but let's get to it. So like I said in my preview yesterday, I think it's a game that's going to be full of goals. I think there's certainly a different team at home. They will attack us down the wing. We know we have our frailties in defence, but I think it's one of those that the belief is with us. That we're cooking something amazing under McKenna and game changer. It's been an amazing three years. Certainly just the two years under McKenna, but the three years in terms of game changer. I believe we can do him. I think the occasion got to some of the lads in the reverse fixture. But I think the nerves are going to get to the Norwich players today, just like it did for us in Portman Road. So in terms of team lineups then, for me, I think we've got to go for Halad Key in goal. Uh, left back, Leif Davis, best left back in the league. Needs to be going in the England squad sooner rather than later. Cam Burgess, we're going to need him to head everything. He was, he was brilliant against Southampton. I know it sounds kind of mad because we conceded, but certainly when the pressure was piling on, he was good there. Um, Wolfie as well, that partnership's really good. I don't think you change these things, you don't change a winning team. And Axel, like I said before, he's that kind of number one right back, I think, for McKenna. Defensively, he'll give you that kind of bit more assurance. Um, and then, who knows, maybe Clark can come off at, uh, off the bench, get an injury time winner, and then do a fist pump to the away end. Uh, midfield, I thought Jack Taylor was brilliant, but again, I think you don't change a winning team. Massimo and Sammy, that's the thing. So we have Massimo and, of course, the player of the season. Make sure you vote for him, Mr. Sammy Morsey. On the left, so on the left, I think Broadhead had his rest, but when he come off the bench, he was phenomenal. Maybe he comes back into the teams. If he's fit and he's firing and, he, and McKenna trusts him, then, you know, you play him, in, you play him there. Number 10 has got to be our number 10, Mr. Connor Chaplin. And then on the right, we know Burns is out. Starboy Amari, he's been doing really well for us. I think this is sort of game that he can really shine at. Up front, we think we think that uh, Moore's going to be out. We think he's got that back spasm. So assuming that he is out, I think it's the day that Ali Al Hamadi steps up, makes his first start. And who's to say that he can't be the new Canary Crusher? He's already come a bit of a cult hero. Adding a couple of goals against the scum would uh, really put him into another kind of uh, level. But yeah, I'm not going to go too much on because like I said, I did a detailed preview. If, and again, for me, I think they're there for the taking. We win today. Not only do I feel that we're going to go up in automatics, but I think if we win today, we're going to win the title. In terms of score, scores and predictions, I think it's going to be a tight one. There's going to be goals. They attack. They've, they've won like seven on the roll, I think, um, at home. But that, that decade of dominance, which, by the way, they, that's overplayed a little because they, they haven't won all those games. I think a lot of the, that, those games over the last 10 years have been draws. And if you look at our head-to-head -head in the league, I think it actually might be total head-to-head. -head. We're actually ahead by one win. So, you know, you're talking about a decade of dominance. Football comes around in cycles. Norwich is going down and ours is going up. And this is where the paths cross. And today... We get over that hoodoo, like we've got over many things since McKenna and, um, and Game Changer have come in. And beating Norwich away is just one of those things we've got to do. But yeah, it'll be a close game. I think they'll score, but like we've seen before, we'll outscore the opposition. So I'm going to go for a 3-2 town win. It's getting close to kickoff. I've got to catch up with Mike. I think he's a bit nervous today, but all in good spirits. So, and, and no doubt, he'll be singing his heart out. Up the town, I'll catch you in there.
saying about that one then peeps before we get into anything remember you can support this channel by becoming a youtube member or by donating on ko-fi i'll put the link in the description below obviously it helps us grow this channel there's a lot of things planned over the coming weeks and months and there's going to be some big things for the new season as well um hopefully when we're in premier league but yeah man let's get to it then so I thought we actually started off well. The lineup was a good lineup, um, and you know, certainly those first ten, fifteen minutes, it was us controlling that game. And to be honest, it was. And this isn't me trying to take away from their win. You know, they got the win, fair play to that, and whatever. Right, and it hurts to say that, but um, it was a flat game. So there really wasn't a lot in it. We didn't create a lot, obviously. Um, and yes, they had a goal, which come from a free kick. I need to watch it back again. I don't know if it's deflected in. Maybe the keeper can do better. I don't know. But to be honest, I think it's come from a bit of a howler from the ref. And you know me, I don't really like to talk about refing decisions. But the only thing I do ask is you are consistent with your decisions. So I did actually like the fact the referee let a lot go and he wasn't card happy. The tackle, um, which eventually leads to the free kick for their goal. That's that's a normal tackle. That's That's very, very soft foul to give. But that's no worse than when uh, the Norwich man fouls Amari Hutchinson in the box. So we don't get a foul there. It just feels like if that's your level on these soft fouls and you're going to give them, then give them. Don't pick and choose. Like, this ain't Woolworths. It's not pick and mix. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, that was annoying. But then they took the opportunity. The man scored. And from that point, they were buzzing. Like, literally, as soon as that ball went in the back of the net, it was a sea of Norwich limbs. You saw six fingers everywhere. You saw brothers in their sisters. It was mad. Norwich fans were living their best life. But then, you know, that was it. Momentum was with them. But overall, it was a very flat derby. Like, there wasn't many opportunities. I don't think our keeper, Hladki, had to make too many saves. And um, their man, their keeper, I think the first shot on target to around the 60th minute for us. So, again, very flat. Very few chances. But that's sometimes what happens here. Your game plan goes out the window. But it just felt 
that we were out for on the pitch, be it, you know, the lack of energy that we had. You know, you've played 40 games to that point at more or less 100 minutes and played every minute and pushed yourselves. You know, you think about all these comebacks that we have and all the rest of it. It's not making an excuse, but it's going to drain you. But, you know, fair play to them. As much as it hurts me to say that, fair play to them. You know, they just wanted it more. We were out for and out for. And they got come away with the win. No matter how scrappy that win was or whatever, they come away with it. And for us, five wins and we're up. It's still in our hands because Leeds couldn't capitalise on us losing. You know, so uh, big up the Sky Blue Army. Um, you know, so they obviously beat Leeds. You know, Leicester won, but they always had a game in hand anyway. And I think now Leicester are just going to kind of carry on with that form. So it really is now just between us and Leeds for second place. And with only one point separating us, and they've got far the superior goal difference, there's no room for error now. We've really got to win the next five on the spin. And if we do, we're up. So in terms of some play ratings, I'm not I'm not really going to do that because I think everyone was like a five or a six at, at the most across the board. Um, you know, I thought Sammy was probably the only real shining star. Um, and even then, it, it was by far from his best game. But like I said, before yesterday, we played 40 games. 40 games where you're more or less playing 100 minutes. And we're running for those 100 minutes. We're putting in maximum effort for 100 minutes. No fan can turn around to me and say we've never left it all out on the pitch. We did that for 40 games. Unfortunately, that caught up with us yesterday at the wrong time. Yes, we're upset because as fans, we we follow the team. We travel around the country, all the rest of it. And this is the fixture we wanted to win. But let me ask you a question. If you had the opportunity to go to the Premier League... Or beat Norwich. Which one do you take? Unfortunately, we can't beat Norwich. And at the beginning of the season, the only things I wanted from this group of players was a top 10 finish and one win over Norwich. Now, they're under-delivered on the Norwich. We couldn't do that. We took one point from a possible six. Yeah? Not good. Fair enough. But the top 10, they've exceeded expectations there. Regardless of anything, we've made the playoffs. How many of you thought we'd make top six? Let alone the fact that we could very well finish within the top two. It's all still in our hands. We need to put this loss to bed because at the end of the day, we can't take that negativity into the remaining five games. Our nerves and stuff like that filters out onto the pitch which was what happened yesterday. And then I just want to pick up one other thing, man, because I've seen a lot of chat online, and to be honest, it's annoyed me a little. So this talk about complimentary tickets was the reason the atmosphere was flat. Like, how are you getting the maths there? I, I, I'm confused on that one. So please, in the comments, can you tell me how giving a complimentary ticket away contributes to the flat atmosphere yesterday? There's an email, apparently, from Mark Ashton, which says... There's um, two tickets for every staff member and there's 200 staff. So they're saying there's 400 tickets which are complimentary. But okay, if that's what the club decides to do, that's their prerogative. Like, if they want to reward their staff, then so be it. They already provide complimentary tickets for all over away games. If they want to do this because it's local, so be it. But even if they didn't, so if, say, we took those 400 and we says, right, we're not going to give 400 complimentary tickets. Instead, we're going to give it to who, who aren't happy down the road because they missed out. And you say, right, here's your ticket. But then just sit in their seat. Just applaud. So how are you going to, how can you tell me that they can contribute more to an atmosphere than other people? Like you can't, so... This is my point. You can't draw that conclusion. And instead, what we're doing is we're now saying, oh, the club fucked up. It's the club's problem. Rare, rare, rare. Remember how good this club has been so far? You know, I've seen people there. I've seen players' families there at games where the players from bloody Portsmouth and the family, you know, and we're away at fucking Sunderland away. Or where the players from bloody uh, West London and we're at Huddersfield away. 
you know, I've seen that there. And guess what? These people are there cheering, chanting, enjoying the game, backing the team, becoming the 12th man. So it doesn't matter whether you got a comp ticket or not. That didn't make any difference on why the atmosphere was flat yesterday. It was flat because people were nervous. We missed the opportunity in December when we should have really battered them and we didn't do it. And now they've got some form and they're playing well at home and the stakes are high. We got nervous. Let's not fucking blame the club for doing a good deed. Like, it just sounds daft, man. And it's just creating an agenda, in my opinion, which doesn't need to be there. So put that shit to bed. We move on to the next game. Next game's always the biggest game, like Mike always says. So next game's the biggest game. And for me, you know, Wednesday, we back the lads. We cheer our hearts out. And everything is still in our hands. we just got to believe. It hurts a little bit now, but just keep believing. And yeah, fair play to Norwich. They'll be in the playoffs. I can't see them dropping below six now. You know, I think it's theirs. You know, they've got that gap. As long as they pick up a point or two on the road, I think they'll be fine. So fair play to them. Um, and who knows? Maybe we might get a chance to put it right next season at the first East Anglian derby in the Premier League for 30 odd years. But yeah, in our hands, keep back in the team and believe. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you all Wednesday.